Hey everybody at Mariner's Wheelhouse, this is your host Casey Bellin, and I brought a special guest with us today, uh, Ty Buttry, new Mariner's reliever. Um, Ty, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing great, Casey. I'm uh, enjoying Arizona. This is my favorite place to have spring training, even though there's only two spring training, so there's not that many options, but I'm doing great. Uh, first of all, I appreciate you asking me to come on. Glad we could figure out a time. This is always a great time to kind of get you know, some podcasts done before the season starts. So, um, no, I just appreciate the interest and, you know, wanting to ask me some questions and hear my story and all that. And I'm excited to be a part of uh, the Mariners. It's definitely a familiar club. You know, I've pitched, I pitched against them a lot, a lot and a while. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to get into it. Yeah, man. Have you, get, have you had a chance to get back up to Seattle yet? Or have you just kind of gone down to Arizona and getting prepared? No, I um, I really haven't gone up to Seattle. I was going out the drive line back in 2020 and 2019, the off season a little bit, getting some work up with them. Um, and then once I left Ball, I kind of that was really the last time I went up there. I had some like check ins, so I'd fly fly up there. And then, well, actually, you know what? Take that back. When I was with uh, the Angels in AAA, we went out to Tacoma for a few times. Um. I mean, so, I mean, that's as close to Seattle as, you know, I'm going to get, but yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful state, man. There's so much stuff there and great food. I love cloudy weather. Actually, like I, I'm, I know I play better in cloudy weather. I don't know if there's a stat or like um, some type of analytic out there. I'm sure there is because there's for everything, but I definitely am a cloudy weather guy. So I'm excited for some rainy days and some sunny days too, but uh, everything about it is just, it feels right. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I, I I actually live in Oregon. So um, okay. speaking of rainy weather, actually, it's raining really hard here right now. So if you pick some of that up, uh, it's just I live in a, I actually live in a in a big dome house. And so the roof is 10, 10, 15 feet from me here. But when it rains hard, you can really just you just hear it. So, yeah, um, yeah. it's kind of nice. I like it. Um, um, it is. All right, Ty, it's we'll... not for everyone, but no, I'm it's like, yeah, people. Got that energy about them. I like it. Yeah, and and in Seattle, you still get to play because they got the roof. So you get the mm -hmm. rain. You still get to play. Definitely. Um, Beautiful all that. ballpark too. Yeah, just you're just yeah. gorgeous. Um, all right, Ty. Well, hey, speaking of that story, um, we know a little bit about the background. Uh, most people do anyway, but I'll go ahead and and say it. Right, fourth round pick, 2012, um, out of Charlotte, North Carolina, high school, um, to the Red Sox. Um, and then, and then kind of, um, shifting, moving forward from that, uh, you, you retired early essentially. Um, so tell us a little bit about your journey from leaving professional baseball at age 28, um, after kind of, you know, two, three really successful seasons, um, and then finding your way back to baseball now before the 2024 season begins. Um, wow. Yeah, no. So it's definitely a crazy story just because it's been unfolding these last three years. And I think if you asked me last year, or you asked me, you know, kind of fresh off the first year I left ball, I would probably have a different answer. Um, it, it would still probably vary around the same points. I mean, definitely I was overall, I mean, you could say like it boils down to being burnt out a little bit, uh, putting a lot of pressure on myself, honestly, working, trying to be too good and trying to like, a little bit of perfectionism and stuff, you know, stress and all that stuff that comes with high performers. Um, as any player deals with it, you know, a lot of guys just maybe don't talk about it as much. I, um, you know, I was always big on the mental game. And so I, I considered myself as like a very strong mental, like I had the mental capacity and the, you know, like the understanding of like when I was off and when I was right. And that's kind of what led me to this decision was like when I left ball, I knew I was off and I knew something was wrong, but it was pretty, it was just kind of overwhelming at the time. And I just needed to, um, it's like the right decision, even though everyone will have an opinion that it probably wasn't the right decision. And looking back on it, I don't really say if it's right or wrong. It just, it had to happen.